Genspark just released an AI developer super agent and today we can test it out completely for free inside Genspark platform. The first thing you want to do is go to genspark.ai, sign in with your Google account or create an account with email. After that you want to click home and go here and select AI developer. After you do that you have three options. You can link to an existing GitHub project. You can select either a simple website that is very nice for quick prototypes or a full stack web application which is a lot more complicated and will require more out of the AI. In today's video we're just going to go ahead and just create this simple website so we can see how this performs. As we can see over here we can select the model that we would like, we can check the different kind of models Today I'm just going to go with GPT-5. The first thing that we are going to be creating is an interactive Pokemon Pokedex web page. Why would I select this option? Because we have tested out this option in also previous videos, so we can compare against that. I'm really excited to see the future of AI as every single day AI tools become better and better, but also cheaper. For example, GPT-5 has O3 Pro intelligence, and it is 10 times cheaper. So for me, this is very, very big. We also have seen Chinese models being completely small, super cheap, super fast, and also super smart. Of course, there are leaps to be made, but I think in six months from now, we're going to see some very amazing models that are also going to be as cheap as the current ones. If you have been following the channel along all these months that I have been creating content, you know what to expect. So while we wait for this answer, I just want to let you know that I have created an AI course that is hosted on Udemy. It costs $20 for you to get and you only pay once, you get 25 hours of material as well as all of the new updates that I make every single month to this course. If you want to learn how to do AI coding, if you want to learn how to generate images, videos, perform automations or text-to-speech synthesis, this is a very good course for you. In my opinion, it's the best and cheapest offer in the AI course marketplace. Try it out and let me know what you think. But I really want to see how GenSpark performs. I really love how these models start off by creating a plan. I think this is super crucial and I'm quite sure that this boosts the performance of the tools. But then we can see exactly which step it currently does and what tools it uses. This is very, very nice because it allows us to understand its thought process, the procedures it follows. And one of the things that I want you to know is that currently there are not enough tools for AI to use. In all honesty, there are some very simple tools that just do simple stuff. And most of these tools could be pretty much replaced by a browser agent that takes multimodal input. But I, I completely understand why this is powerful. But I would love to see AI tools create their own tools. And if they are not able to find a tool that helps them complete a task, they would on the fly create and test a new tool. This is like one paradigm of self-improvement that I don't see people doing and it makes no sense. Like just use AI to create better and better and more tools so that AI can use a lot more stuff than it previously could. And we already see a very nice looking website, a very good design, great animations. Already what I'm seeing is a lot better than what I have seen from all of the previous applications that I have used for this specific prompt. This is amazing. But also stay around because we are going to be creating two more games. And I think these are super crucial for you to watch. I think you are absolutely going to love them. We have completed 50% of the steps. Now we want to implement a JavaScript that is fetching those Pokemons. It's probably finishing that. We want, we want to add accessibility features, which is for people that don't have the ability to see. And we also have to add some more things, as I see here, but nothing major. The website is pretty much completed and it looks really good. I really, really like what I'm seeing. You can also interact with it, check it out. 
select a Pokemon. You can close animations or turn them on or make them shiny or not shiny. So that's very, very nice. This is amazing. This is very, very beautiful. I, I really love how the animations look. I really like the design. It's, it's pretty great. So the model is still working. It's still doing its job. And in any case, if you want to check out Genspark, I will leave a link for it down below. The second thing we are going to be creating is a Flappy Bird game. For this use case, I will be using Cloud Opus 4.1, which is a very, very capable model that recently came out. It's better than Cloud 4. It's not cheap at all. It's very costly, but I have heard that it is the best model to use if you are coding. I'm not a big fan of Cloud, even though I have been using it in the past and it was very, very good. What I really hate about them is how they release models that are good at coding. That's nice, but they're so costly. They, are, they cost so much that it is very, very costly for me to do this investment. And I absolutely hate that. So the model was able to finish up with the Pokedex and this is how it looks like. Looks super nice. You can see the file explorer with all of the uh, files that it has created. We can see the CSS and we see the index HTML. There's no database and you could also publish this website on the internet. So let me give you a look of how this would look like and this is how it looks like. Interesting. And this is the API it used to fetch these Pokemons. Quite nice. Really nice website. I really like it. Let's check if this works. So yeah, it does. So the search mode is working. Let's click clear. It works. Shiny. Nice. Really love this. Amazing answer. And this is the Flappy Bird game that is getting created from Cloud4 Opus. So while we wait for all of that to happen, I think it's a nice idea to also start our, you know, third prompt. Even though we have no credits, so we're not going to be doing that. So the game is ready and we can open this up into mobile view, for example, maybe in a new tab and let's test it out. Why it's so hard always? Why are these, you know, Flappy Bird games? so so hard like every tool every model i have ever ever used makes these games so but so unplayable i don't know what's the problem with ai it looks very nice i really like the bird i really like the pipes i like the menu it's great it also took so little time it was very efficient very fast but the game just once again it's unplayable even though the game is with weak gravity. I will tell it to make the game with gravity 0.0.5. Make it as easy as possible. And we have used up all of our credits. Sadly, the question is, if I want to change this game, will I be able to? Probably not. I will have to download it. Okay. Understood. So that's the video for today. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you on the next video.